but environment is very volatile and people cannot really go out and uh, provide first-hand information to accountability mechanisms like the courts, like prosecutors to investigate certain offenses. So we can just imagine the situation in Myanmar, for instance, when the junta again take, took over the government and most of the human rights violations hamleting the uh, deprivation of uh, basic uh, uh, necessities as well as uh, grave violations of human rights like um, summary executions. Most of these information did not come from people, you know, they came from people on the ground but they were shared online. And since the environment is very volatile, they were not able to seek um, various, um, they cannot seek redress bar uh, before various forums in their countries, which uh, led other human rights observers as well as monitors to take the cudgels for them before various international fora. The Berkeley Protocol was uh, formulated by a group of experts gathering, of course, at the University of um, uh, University of California in Berkeley, and uh, thereafter, led by the Office of the Human uh, of the High Commissioner for Human Rights of the United Nations, and thereafter, they came up with this set of um, standards in order to professionalize digital open source investigation. And how is that relevant to our lives as lawyers, as criminal law, criminology students, law students who will eventually become lawyers? It's because the standards here, they dovetail with a lot of the standards that we adopt when we present digital evidence or electronic evidence before the courts. Very rigorous yung mga methodologies that are introduced in the Berkeley Protocol. And these are methodologies or standards that we can employ when we, for instance, gather evidence from the internet when it comes, for instance, to um, gender-based sexual harassment online, for instance, if we're going to prosecute a crime or we're going to prosecute a case for violation of the Safe Spaces Act, particularly in the uh, electronic sphere, electronic gender-based sexual harassment, Right? So for instance, um, sexual harassment through a comment posted on Facebook. Right? How do we bring that to the court in a manner, in a, in a way, in a form that is admissible and compliant with our ordinary rules of electronic evidence. And again, also, um, in a way that we can assure or we can um, we can assure its authenticity and we can demonstrate its authenticity as well as reliability before various forums. Not necessarily limited to the courts. Because the Berkeley Protocol, as I have mentioned, it is something that is formulated, that was formulated primarily for human rights investigations. A particular subject, like what happened during the prehistoric times, open source information. Right? It's something that we can observe by browsing the internet, by looking at the news, news sites, Raptory, Wire, Netnet, etc. We can see information there about news stories that are published. Right? Manila Bay reclamation is not that except for one because of. Right? So those are the information, those are some of the big news of the day. We can purchase also, right? Like for instance, academic journals that we can purchase. In court, for instance, I'm handling a medical malpractice case. So I had to, I'm representing the medical professional there. And um, I needed evidence from medical journals, particularly uh, for the injury. How you shown about a uh, query that you are raising. Like, for instance, I have encountered this before the NLRC, the Department of Labor and Employment, I wanted, uh, I wanted information on the number of collective bargaining agreements that were um, that were forged during this particular time period, and they were graceful enough to provide me with the details. They even asked for a breakdown on the number of employees who are covered by these collective bargaining agreements. So those are information that I can request through a free information electronic format, things that we can see in the internet, open source information in the internet. 
it encompasses user-generated and machine-generated data. For instance, there are some websites that when you input certain information, they will provide for uh, they will provide a certain infographic. So that's machine-generated. It's a computer which generated the visual representation of the data. Or they aggregate the data and present it in a visual manner, right? By giving you charts, right? So based on the number of users who visited our website, 60% are students, 40% are uh, etc. Right? So that's machine generated. User generated, very fancy words, pero think social media. User generated, it's content produced by the users. They publish it, right? They take photographs, they publish it, they post it. They uh, come up with content, they write down their text and what their thoughts of the day are, what their observations are about a certain incident, and then they post it in their social media profile or in their social media page. That is, that can be observed by the public depending on the privacy restrictions imposed by the user. So those are examples, social media posts, videos, or images uploaded on the internet. What is digital open source investigations? These are investigations based on digital open source information. Open source. Diba? Nangisip ba natin yun? At some point in our lives, it will become relevant. Yung contents ng internet can be used as, a, as evidence in whatever tribunal, whether it's in a court or it's in a human rights report that you're trying to publish. For instance, if you're a um, gender justice advocate, and you belong to a non-government organization concerned about advocating for women's rights, you want to check the status of women in the internet, their, their, their safety, right? So you will scour information from social media about misogynism. It's something that we use in order to prove a fact, not only any fact, but a fact in issue in the court, not any fact, right? For instance, when you're prosecuting, when you're prosecuting uh, a crime of rape, diba? it is irrelevant kung ano yung suot ng victim. It is irrelevant kung ano yung kanyang sexual history. Right? We might be curious, but that's not relevant at all in the case as supported by jurisprudence and as supported by common human decency. Right? So those are basically some of uh, well evidence, right? For evidence to be admitted, it has to be relevant as well as admissible under the rules of procedure. So, you know, guidance in undertaking digital open source investigations. Since we have already crystallized, we have already filtered what digital open source investigation is to be used in the fields of international criminal justice and human rights. And it is meant to professionalize the practice of open source investigations in the set fields. So some of the principles that we have to clear documentation, record keeping, and oversight. Meaning, when you document your open source information or evidence, you need to be able to explain to other people what is the methodology that you use. How did you ensure that the information that you gathered from the internet is accurate, authentic, etc. So you have to have clear documentation, kailan mo record, kailan mo kinolect yung open source information, fake news. You have to own up to it. Diba? Immediately rectify the mistake. Competency, must have the proper training and technical skills. Siguro naman, marunong man kumuha na full page screen ka. You have to be as accurate and truthful as possible. So dapat talaga, Kung ano yung pinapakita information, don't draw conclusions na hindi naman pinapakita doon sa data or doon sa information na nakita mo sa internet. Minsan yung na-assume mo na, eh, yung violator, yun know, siya, eh, parang intoxicated siya, parang, pero parang, kunwari, yung isang ano, transsexual woman na nagwala sa isang bar, ganyan. May conclusion ka agad, ah, nasing. Pwede yan, di ba? Or, hayok sa laman. Pero parang wala namang anything about that video, di ba? Aside from the altercation that would support some of the conclusions that might you might have drawn from your biases. Di ba? So you have to do a bias check. Okay? 
data minimization to the extent possible minimal data collection right magsa-save ka po collect ka ng data and this will so nasa device mo mga mukha ng tao mukha ng bystanders di ba ganyan etc a lot of personal information you might have come to possess so nagko-collect and nagpa-process ka lamang ng digital information if it is justified, necessary, and proportional. Justified meaning, I am collecting, I am saving this website, for instance. I am saving this web page with this article because, one, it's relevant to my investigation. It might prove a fact in this piece, right? And I need only this part of the website. I don't need to dig deeper, so proportional. You need to be able to articulate an objective in gathering that data. Pero pag wala kang ma-articulate na objective, then baka naman hindi mo kailangan i-collect and i-process yung digital information na yun. In a jail first in Camp Olivas, and then he was transferred to Angela City. Now this is the story. Uh, the prison warden said he died of COVID. So sa practice, kung official authority ang nagsabi, he died of COVID, you tend to take it as it is. But looking back at the story now, we were not given a copy of the, uh, the test that they do for COVID. Okay? And then the family came to us, sabi, um, Joseph died of COVID inside jail. So may presumption na ando na, COVID na. Pero had we had access to documents confirming COVID, it would have been a better story. So ang tanong ko kay, kay, kay attorney, do you know of a system where all COVID deaths are in the country? Do we have that? And you can access your results. I, I know that's private, private data, no? So, what we can do is the internet world. Um, so, we can open source information. It can be information that you can observe, readily observe, request, or you can uh, observe and request. So it's one of the things na sitting to COVID deaths yun, and without revealing your personal, sensitive personal information, yung mga names, addresses, yung mga sex, yung mga namatay, then I think um, it can be generated in a way na protective pa rin of uh, basic data privacy laws. So it can be submitted to the appropriate department, usually keeping track of the Department of Health. So there's only Reports that the negatives you try. You'll be surprised sometimes what the day responds. FOA now, it's an FOA request. Yeah, but it's the height of COVID. Yes, the height of COVID. Actually, um, the FOA request can be usually some the websites of government agencies. They usually appoint the FOA officer in them as required by the EO. Um, difficulty now with the Freedom of Information Executive Order is that it only covers executive agencies. No? Executive okay. agencies. Siyempre, yung executive, yung president, yung jurisdiction nila naman would be the executive department. So, uh, with the Department of Health, maybe you can request uh, COVID deaths. I think also the PSD started keeping track at some point of the deaths before. So, you can submit an FOI request as to the number of COVID deaths in the Philippines. COVID related, COVID related. BJLP, of course, J, you can also request. No, then sa diretso sa kanila, sa department nila, sa bureau. So, pag tinik lang, and they must be able to, ano, they must.